friends with many corp dev departments and I have great respect for them. So that's not about this. The point is that corp dev is more of a push model. When corp dev does a transaction, they have to find a place within the business that's going to own your company once it's bought. So even if you get corp dev excited, it's then their job to figure out a way to push you into the org. A much better way to go is to find a buyer within the organization who will pull corp dev and finance and everyone else through. One of the places companies get bought is in the product organization, in product management. That kind of purchase is a product leader saying we have a roadmap. We know what we're going to build in the next 18 months. We will never get to this opportunity. And we know we need this capability in our organization so we can build it or we can buy it. We have other priorities. Let's just buy it. If they've made this decision that they'd rather buy you than to build it internally, then they go to Corp Dev and pull Corp Dev into it. So if you want to sell your company, one of the places you can focus on if you have a great product is a product development department. It's very easy to have a discussion with a product development group and ask them about their roadmap and where you fit into their roadmap. A second potential place to sell your company is to a sales organization, a sales org. The sales org sell is when the organization has a bunch of products they're selling to customers and realizes that with your product, they could close more deals. It's the classic case of synergy. If you're doing $10 million a year of sales and it's a multi-billion dollar company, their view is they can take 10 to 50. The third place that you can sell a company is into the tech stack or infrastructure team. This is a very hard sell because it's a core part of the company where they usually believe they can build it themselves, so it's a much harder sell. Of course, the best place, the fourth place, is to sell to the executive suite or the CEO. That's where the biggest prices are paid. That's where you're considered a strategic transaction. Of course, though, it's hard to get to the CEO suite. I did this little matrix of value to acquire on the y-axis and purchase price on the x-axis. The lowest value are what we call aqua hires or talent hires. Those are the lowest value to the acquirer and the least purchase price. That's basically when your investors aren't going to support you any longer and they're basically just recruiting you. The rule of thumb is about a million dollars per developer. Usually investors get washed out in these deals. Investors hate these deals. They're notoriously hard to pull off no matter what you read in the press. But aqua hires do happen and they're certainly better than shutting down your company. So that is one route is a talent hire where someone sees value in your people. Moving up the stack is where there's a product gap. You certainly get more value than an aqua hire and a better purchase price when you fit into a product suite. Of course you get more value if you can really show that you're going to be a revenue driver for the business. And there's a reason, and I'll explain that, even though it's kind of obvious. On a product basis, it's hard to justify the premium and price they have to pay to acquire your company. But on a revenue basis, they can do a synergy model so they can justify paying a higher price because they're going to sell more of your product through their channel. Much more valuable acquisitions happen if there's a strategic reason to buy you. That could be a strategic threat or a strategic opportunity. I'll just come up with a random example. If you're a consumer product company that doesn't want Dollar Shave Club to exist because it's cutting into your core business, you might pay a premium to take them out. In order to have a strategic sale, you need to be in the CFO or CEO suite for sure. Examples of this might be Salesforce acquiring Buddy Media or Radiant 6, where they really wanted to be in new markets like social. The reason I use those examples is it's places where a premium was paid on price relative to revenue because the CEO was very interested in the asset. Another example of a strategic threat was Microsoft buying Yammer. Actually, it was more strategic opportunity where they felt that was a big business they could grow. Another strategic opportunity is Facebook buying Oculus Rift, knowing that strategically as an opportunity they wanted to get into virtual reality. Importantly, at the strategic level, also it can include that maybe buying this company would help the purchaser share price so they can justify paying a premium. Or maybe not having a play in this space is hurting the company's share price because the market's beating them up for not playing. Maybe this is GM investing in Lyft. 
the most valuable, the biggest prices are paid for defensive moves where you just can't afford to have your competitor own this asset. I think the recent moves by Facebook to buy WhatsApp or what they would have paid for Snapchat or even Instagram were defensive moves. Don't take it the wrong way. Of course, those are great companies and great opportunities. You could also define them as strategic, but I'll tell you why I put them in a differentiated bucket. When you get to the point that you just can't afford for your competitor to own somebody, you will pay a super premium to own them, and I think that was the case with WhatsApp. In the case of strategic or defensive purchases, often the buying company has a premium on its purchase price because of its own stock.